Welcome to the Calvary Church Podcast, where we strive to lead people into an overflowing life with Jesus. Join us as we explore inspiring messages, engaging stories, and thought-provoking conversations that uplift your spirit and deepen your faith. Whether you're at home, on the go, or anywhere in between, we're glad you're here. Let's dive in. Today, we are uh, continuing a series we started last week called Being Versus Doing. One of the challenges we find in life is the, the tension between these two uh, things that pull uh, our, our lives in two different directions. One is that we are defined by what we do. The other is we are defined by who we become. And uh, in, in a recent survey that was published by Psychology Today, 96% of respondents said they were always or sometimes good listeners. Now, do you think that is true? 96% said they're sometimes or always good listeners. What do you you think? You can turn to your neighbor and say, are you a good listener? I know you're probably thinking, I'm a good listener. This person I just talked to probably isn't. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a stranger. Um, I'm good at listening. My my boss isn't a good listener. My spouse isn't a good listener. My neighbor's not really a good listener. You fill in the blank. They, those people, they're not good listeners. But, But look around in our world. Are we really good listeners? When you think about it, I would suggest that we actually are pretty horrible listeners because we listen to respond, not to hear or process, right? We, we're, we're just listening like, how can I re, uh, give a good rebuttal to this? Or how can I counter this? Or, hey, I got a really good story I want to share about that. I'm guilty of that more often than not. My wife is always like, Nick, you don't always have to talk. Just close your mouth and listen. Um, uh, I could go on for stories all the time. But I, I think this is one of the struggles we find in our world. Now, let me explain. Ralph Nichols, he's a professor of rhetoric at the University of Minnesota. He had this discovery. He, he thought, you know what, I don't think my students are listening when I'm teaching. So uh, as a professor, he did what any good professor would do. He decided, let's do a study. So he uh, petitioned the education system across the state of Minnesota and did this study. He asked teachers halfway through their class to stop and to ask their students to to basically uh, uh, respond with what they had just been taught halfway through the class. And you know what they found? First and second graders, really, really good listeners. 90% of first and second graders were giving the right answers. They were responding properly. But as kids got older, results started to plummet. By junior high, and and if you have have, have kids who are, you know, junior high, senior high, you probably are like, amen, amen, preach it. by junior high, only 44% uh, answered correctly. 44%. One in four high schoolers could give, this is halfway through the class. This isn't like, hey, what did your teacher teach about last week or even yesterday? Literally halfway through the class, they stop and say, what did I just teach in the first half of the class? One in four high schoolers could respond with the right answer. Uh, They they clearly had better things to think about than what was taking place there. Now, the truth is, the older people get, the more listening comprehension plummets. It's it's just the way it goes. There are plenty of studies uh, that examine this phenomenon. Uh, While listening is at the core of our communications, uh, after all, you know, average adults listen nearly twice as much as they talk. The truth is, most people are really bad at it. Here, here's one, one other uh, study that was done. Test takers were asked to sit through a 10-minute oral presentation and later to describe its content. Half of adults, half of adults couldn't describe the content even moments after the talk was given. And, and worse than that, uh, 75%, fully 75% of listeners couldn't recall the information 48 hours later. Now, I'm going to talk to you for the next 20 minutes or so, 15 minutes. This doesn't bode well, okay? Let's just be honest. You are going to forget everything that we're talking about here, like before you even eat lunch. So we're going to try really hard so you can remember something and capture something. Because we're working with like, uh, have you ever tried to fill a bucket that has a hole in it and it's just like leaking out? We're, we're working with that, okay? We just be honest, okay? There's nothing wrong. We're not like, we're not dumb people. We're all very intelligent people. 
This is just what happens as adults. We don't comprehend things well. Here's the problem. The human brain has the capacity to digest 40, four, sorry, not 40, 400 words per minute. We have the capacity, 400 words a minute. Even the fastest speakers only speak at about 125 words a minute. What does that mean? That means that almost three-fourths of your brain isn't working to process information. So what are you doing? You're thinking of something else. You're on your phone. You're, you're thinking about this and that. Like, so the, the human brain is so developed. Now, children generally are better at this because their brains haven't fully developed to the same level. Now, I understand. I have young kids. They're not the greatest listeners, right? But children have the capacity to listen better than adults because their brains aren't fully developed. So they're not distracted in the same way. Now, they are distracted, but they're not distracted in the same way. Uh, adults with this extra brain power are way ease, more easily distracted. There was a book that was recently published called The Plateau Effect, which was based on this study that authors Bob Sullivan and Hugh Thompson conducted with Carnegie Mellon University about uh, digital distractions and how digital distractions have changed our culture. And stick with me here. We're going through a bunch of studies, but it'll make sense here in a minute. In the study, while well, they found that listeners in general are not great at comprehension, they discovered one of the big causes of this is that mere possibility that one's phone might ring or notify them decreases comprehension by 20%. Just not, not that the phone is, just the fact that it could. Have you ever been at um, you know, lunch with someone or coffee and your phone is sitting right there, right in front of you, right? I'm guilty of this. Just the fact that you know it could, like someone might like something you posted today. That like your TikTok reel might actually hit 10 views today, not five. I'm just joking. I, I'm, I'm guilty of this. <clears throat> like all of these things that are notifying us and giving us, just the, not that it does, just the fact that it could decreases our comprehension by 20%. And the author's research adds to this collection of work that suggests <clears throat> attention and comprehension is becoming increasingly rare because of all the distractions in our lives. See, we aren't really good listeners. If we're to be honest, we're not that great at listeners. And in, in our context, Western world, America, we're really not great listeners. So the question would be, well, so what? So we're not great listeners. Who, what's the big deal? We live in the information age. Like, if I don't hear something the first time, I could probably Google it and find it. Like, the person who gives me instructions on how to put this thing together or, or to do this or that, like, I could just Google it and I'll probably find the instructions somewhere else. So no big deal. Like, no harm, no foul. What's the big deal if I don't listen or I don't grasp everything? Well, something happens to a person or group of people that aren't great at listening. And it's something that I've learned the hard way. Maybe you've uh, had a similar experience this, th as this. I, I'm going somewhere and, and a friend tells me uh, where I'm supposed to meet them. And they don't give me the address like a normal person would give. They just give me the, uh, in, the directions. And they just rattle them off. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that seems simple enough. I got that. Don't think anything of it until I've taken like two wrong turns and end up like 20 minutes from where I'm supposed to be, and I call them up, and I'm trying to talk them into just give me the address so I can type it into Google Maps and get my step-by-step -step instructions. Um, because one wrong turn, just one right instead of a left, or one going straight instead of turning, gets me way off track, doesn't it? You've maybe been there before. We end up somewhere we're not supposed to be, not because we didn't have the desire to get there, not because we don't have the means to get there, but simply because we didn't fully listen to the directions. Now, I know we're in Western Pennsylvania, and directions are so hard to listen to because we're like, turn left where that uh, diner used to be, and you'll go up the road a little bit. Uh, there used to be a school right there on your right. Go past that. If, if you reach where the oak tree used to be before it was cut down, you went too far. And you're like, well, I don't even know where any of that stuff is. If you aren't from Western Pennsylvania, you could probably relate. We're not great at that. But, but here's the deal. Here's the, the reality. This is a simple thought I want to share with you. When you don't listen well, you often find yourself in places you're not, you aren't supposed to be. When you don't listen well, you often find yourself in places you aren't supposed to be. Whether it's your boss giving you instructions for an upcoming project, your spouse telling you what, what they want for their birthday, or you getting directions to a friend's house. Missing one little small detail 
one piece of information can change the entire outcome. You could end up in West Newton instead of Ligonier. You could end up throwing a surprise birthday party for a person that's clearly told you they didn't want one. You could even proudly complete a project without realizing the entire project was supposed to be a presentation, not a printed report. These are all examples of why listening can be so important. It is so important in our, our life. Uh, I love history and I love this story from President Franklin Roosevelt. President Franklin Roosevelt, renowned as one of the great presidents in our country's history, He's, of course, one of four, uh, one of four, uh, some of, one of our top presidents uh, over the last hundred years, clearly. But one of the characteristics that he's most well known for was his personality and signature smile. But even as the president, he discovered that people weren't really good at listening, especially when they're standing in a long receiving line, just shaking his hand. <clears throat> so he decided he was going to do this little joke experiment. There's one particular day, there's a long line of people who were uh, getting ready to greet him in a, a receiving line. And as each person came up to him, he extended his hand with a big smile. He said, I murdered my grandmother this morning. And he didn't actually do that, okay? We're not breaking news here. He just said that. And people would automatically respond with comments like, how lovely. Continue, <laughs> continue on with your great work. That's wonderful. Nobody listened to what he was saying, except for one foreign diplomat. When the president said to him, I murdered my grandmother this morning, the diplomat responded softly, I'm sure she had it coming to her. <laughs> you see, we, we miss so much of what is happening. We miss the funny moments even in life. Listening is such an important skill, but it's more than just a skill that would be nice to have in your toolbox. It's more than something that we should try to be good at. It's something that we need to be good at. This is because while we're not great at listening to others, we're oftentimes even worse at listening to God's voice, what God's take on our situations in life might actually be. And, and I don't know about you, but hearing the voice of the one that created us, the one that sees the beginning from the end, that's someone that I would want to listen to. That's someone that I need to hear from. And, and this month we're talking about this tension between our being versus our doing. And, and the crux of this tension is often found at the crossroads of listening versus assuming. Listening versus assuming. We assume we know what God wants because we think God wants what I want. Like, if I want something, God probably wants that too. After all, God just wants us to be happy, right? Is that his goal? It's not really, but that's what we think. And if he wants us to be happy, he probably just wants what I want. But, but can I tell you, and hopefully this isn't too jarring for you, but that's not the case. God doesn't just want what you want. What you want isn't necessarily what God wants. And there are plenty of times, you can read throughout this book we call the Bible more times than I could count, the amount of times that an adult, a human being, a person, a man or a woman wanted something and God wanted something else for them. Because our wants, our wishes, our thoughts, our view, our perspective is really narrow. I love what the prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. He said this, For my thoughts, speaking of God, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Verse 9 it says this, uh, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Think about that for a second. Like his ways, his thoughts are higher than ours. They're greater than ours. God isn't an equal with us. He sees things that we don't see. God sees the bigger picture that we often miss because we're obsessed with what's right in front of us. That means that the pain you're experiencing right now, it might seem overwhelming, but God sees what's ahead and he's kindly saying to us, keep going. I, I know it hurts right now. I know this is a really difficult season. I know, I know things didn't go the way you'd planned or had hoped, but, but keep going because I, I see what's ahead. Or, or, or that means that the setback you experienced at work, the disappointment you walked through in a relationship, all that seemed devastating. God sees how that unexpected turn is going to set you up for something you couldn't have even dreamed was possible. You see, when we listen especially to what Jesus is speaking to us, we're able to properly 
properly align our priorities. We're able to understand what's most important, what's not. And because of this, listening guides our process of becoming who God made us to be. In the book of Psalm 139, it says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God shaped you and wired you and gifted you for such a specific, unique purpose on this earth. You aren't an accident. You, you aren't just taking up space. You're not just another face or another name, but you, you have value and worth, and God sees something in your life. But to see that value and worth be realized, we have to be willing to listen to the creator, the author, the finisher of our faith, the one who shaped us and made us, And if we could just listen to the creator, we could discover things about ourselves and our world and how God can use us that we never even knew were possible. And if we we can't listen, we end up in places we aren't supposed to be. Because when you don't listen well, you often find yourself in places you aren't supposed to be. So as we return to the story that we're looking at this month in Luke chapter 10, I want to give you a quick kind of refresher if you weren't with us last week, what we're looking at. The story of these two ladies named Mary and Martha. And in this story, Jesus and his disciples, they go to Bethany, which is a town just outside the city limits of Jerusalem. And Jesus and his disciples would oftentimes go to this home. Mary and Martha were good friends. And they would go there to rest, recharge, kind of be refreshed. It was a place to kind of escape. As Pastor Michael mentioned earlier, it was a place to to kind of uh, uh, escape or, or to, to abandon kind of their regular rhythm just for a few days so they could uh, be recharged. And so they go there to be recharged, and, and they go to the home of these two ladies, Mary and Martha. And, and in verse 38, this is where we pick up in Luke chapter 10, verse 38. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Now, this is really interesting when you look at the scope of Scripture. We learn so much. This lady Mary here, uh, there are three different times in Scripture that, that we find her sitting at the feet of Jesus. Here in Luke chapter 10, verse 39, she sat at his feet and listened to his word and what he's saying. And in John's gospel, which is just uh, a few, uh, the, next, the next book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in John's gospel, John chapter 11, verse 32, she fell at Jesus' feet and shared her sorrow over the death of her brother, Lazarus. Uh, The next chapter later, in John chapter 12, verse 3, she comes to Jesus' feet and pours out her worship with perfume. It's interesting to note that is this Mary, same person, finds herself at the feet of Jesus each time. Each of these instances, there there was an aroma. The first one, that we read there in John, or in Luke chapter 10, it was the aroma of food. Martha, her sister, was bait, making food. The second one was the aroma of death, Lazarus' death. The third one was the aroma of perfume. And Mary had this rhythm that we see. It wasn't just a one-time thing. There was this rhythm in her life where she'd find herself at the feet of Jesus. And what seems to have happened in this instance is Jesus enters the home of Mary and Martha. He sits down. And he begins to teach. He begins to to share with his friends. And and Mary immediately knows exactly where to go. She goes and sits at his feet. She sits down. She's locked into what he's saying. She's paying close attention. Her her mind was clear. She's resolved to abide in the moment. This is one of the challenges of distractions. Uh, You know, there are a lot of times where I'm praying, I'm talking to God. And like, those are the moments that everything I need to do all of a sudden becomes really evident. Like, I couldn't sit down and figure out what, what am I supposed to do today until that moment. And then, like, all of it just hits me. Here's a little, little uh, hack for this. If you're going to take some time to worship and pray, get a notepad and just keep it right there. Because all of that stuff's just going to come rushing back. You can write it down and forget about it. Um, but, but, but Mary, in this moment, she was abiding in the moment. She was in the moment. She was locked in. She's sitting at the feet of Jesus, almost as a, as, as a student, sitting at the feet of of a teacher, looking to learn. This, this is what was said of the Apostle Paul, that, that he grew up at the feet of Gamaliel, who was his teacher. Mary sitting at Christ's feet, and it signified this readiness to receive, this submission and surrender to the guidance of what Jesus was saying. She just was hungry for what he wanted to say. And last week, 
we, we talked about this lesson from this story that, that our identity is more shaped by what we're becoming than by what we're producing. That you aren't defined by what you produce. You aren't defined by what you do. We are defined by what we're becoming. And, and who we become, what we become, and how we become that is going to ultimately be influenced by what and who we are listening to. The things we are listening to. We, you see, our identity, who we are and who we become is shaped by the things that we hear. The things that we allow our ears to hear and our mind to process. If you're, if you're told your entire life you are worthless, you're hopeless, you're good for nothing, eventually you're going to start to believe that. And you're going to start living your life in the context of that truth. Because you've been told it so often. There's this really interesting scene in the famous movie, The Help. You may have seen it. Where Abilene Clark, an African-American nanny and maid played by Viola De- Davis repeats this phrase to young May Mobley, this young white girl that she is raising as her nanny. And she would have her repeat this over and over and over again. She said, you is smart, you is kind, you is important. Why why would she do that? Because young May was never told that. And she didn't believe it about herself. And so she was growing up as a young girl, not even believing in herself. And Abilene, God bless her, would, would sit down, encourage me to repeat that phrase with her over and over and over. Why? Because it was teaching her a sense of value and worth. The importance of this statement was that young May learned from her amazing nanny, Abilene, a lesson about herself that her own parents weren't teaching her, that she had value. There was something that shifted in her when she heard it, when she said it. There's something in our human makeup that shifts based on what we hear, and process, what we say. Th- that, that, this was true because what we hear, what we listen to, what we eventually believe shapes who we become, who we are. Paul writes uh, it this way in, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, in ESV, it says, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. What we hear, when we hear the word of God, it changes us, it builds our faith. You know, when you hear the miracles of what God is doing around the world, it builds your faith like, maybe I can pray for that. Maybe I can believe in that. When you read the word of God and you see how Jesus walked up to a blind man and and prayed for him, the man could see again. Like, it builds your faith like, maybe I could do that. When When you read the stories in the book of Acts of the disciples going out and healing the sick and even raising the dead, like, it builds our faith. Why? This is what Paul's writing in the book of Romans. Like, Faith is built when we hear the word of Christ. And, and, and for us today, the, the hope isn't that we just, you know, become more religious and follow all these roles and laws. It's that, it's that we can be changed and shaped into who God wants us to be. It's difficult to do that if we don't hear, if we're not listening to the word, words of Jesus. Mary here found herself at the greatest place she could find herself to be shaped and transformed at the feet of Jesus, listening to every word. We have so much information being blasted at us in our world. So many distractions, so many things that are vying for our attention. But are you listening to the one that really matters? The one that that actually knows the way? Are you listening to what God is trying to speak to you? Because when you don't listen well, you will often find yourself in places you aren't supposed to be. And, and for some of us today, maybe you found yourself in places you're not supposed to be or places you never wanted to be. Not, not because you're incompetent, not because you don't have the means to, be, to become who you should be or who you could be, but simply because you aren't listening to the voice of Jesus in your life. This is something that just takes us pausing and listening to what Jesus is trying to speak to us, what he's trying to do in our lives. How often we run from one thing to the next, we rush from one thing to the next, never stopping to say, Jesus, what are you speaking to me? See, Jesus is sitting in the chair. He's sitting here. He's, he's, not, he's not running. He's not trying to, you know, be chased. He's sitting here. He's just asking inviting us to sit at his feet to say, I have so much to share with you. I'm so proud of you. I love you so deeply and I want you 
to become what you were made to be. I want you to see the fullness of what I made you to be. But would you just listen? And he's not begging us. He's not beating us over the head. He's inviting us to sit at his feet. And we'll talk about this more in the coming weeks, but we often are so busy doing all of the stuff, even good stuff, that we forget to stop and sit at the feet of Jesus and just listen. As the worship team comes today, are you you listening to the voice of Jesus in your life? He's, He's sitting there speaking, but are you listening? Is his voice loud enough to hear over the noise of the world in your ears? There are times where it's good to block out all the noise. You know, as a parent, I have four kids. I've learned this really helpful skill. I can drive our minivan, and kids can be screaming in the back, and I don't hear it. I don't hear I'm just blocking it out. I'm just focused on the road. Sorry, Heidi, I'm driving. I can't. I know. I know that, that diaper all over the window. I saw it. Yep. I'm, I'm driving. You know, I've learned. How are you? taking moments to pause to block out the noise of our world to listen to the voice of Jesus there are so many skills and abilities that I could teach you about following Jesus well so many things how to interpret the Bible how to love people well how to serve with joy and kindness how to to be generous and sacrificial with your time and your resources. These are such important attributes of following Jesus. But can I tell you the greatest, the greatest skill, ability, attribute of following Jesus is the ability to listen to the voice of Jesus. How guilty we are of living for Jesus and completely ignoring his voice. We're living for the one that we haven't even invited into our lives. The one that we are so quick to to run past. How quickly we miss those God-ordained moments where Jesus is sitting in the chair with so much to share with us, but we walk right past him. And I want to challenge you today. We're going to take a moment here to practice this, but I want to challenge you to create margin, space in your life, to hear the voice of Jesus, to, to be being open to Jesus in your life and what he wants to speak into your life. I don't know what that looks like for you. Like we, we all have schedules and we're busy and we're going in 10, 10 different directions. Maybe that's blocking out time in the morning. Maybe that's turning the radio off on your drive to work and spending that time with Jesus. Maybe it's before you go to bed, turn Netflix off and, and just spend some quiet time with him. We like to talk to Jesus, but are we listening to Jesus? Are we listening to what he is saying? And there's three things, three ways, real quick, that we we can listen to the voice of Jesus. One is lean into the wisdom of those that hear his voice. Maybe there are men and women in your life that you know, you trust, hear the voice of Jesus. Lean into their counsel and their wisdom. If you're making a big decision, ask what they sense God wants for them. Lean into that wisdom. Number two, be open to what God speaks through the Bible. We have God's word right here. Be open to it. If, if, if you're sensing something that contradicts scripture, then it's probably not right. Lean into the wisdom of people who hear the voice of Jesus. Be open to what God's word, what the Bible says. And the last one is listen to the voice of Jesus in your own life. What is Jesus? You're like, I don't even recognize his voice. I don't even know how to, to, to process that. You're never going to know until you try. And, and over time, you'll, you'll learn to hear his voice. It'll become recognizable. How do you know it's the voice of Jesus? It should line up with the wisdom of those who you know hear his voice and the wisdom that is provided in Scripture. If it contradicts those, if those three contradict, something's up. But be willing to take time to listen. 
Maybe you spend time in the morning doing devotions and you read the word of God and you take time to pray and that's so good. If you don't, that's a, a really healthy rhythm to position yourself to receive from God. But, but don't just read his word and don't just talk to him. Take 30 seconds. Set a timer on your phone for a minute and then put the phone away because you'll be, you know, you'll be ready for it to give you a notification. But set a timer for 30 seconds, a minute. Turn everything off and just be quiet and listen. If you have kids, that's probably not possible. Turn some music on and just sit and be still. We sang it earlier, be still and know that I am God. We oftentimes can't know what God is speaking and know that he is God in the busyness of life. Let's take this lesson from Mary in this story. We can sit at the feet of Jesus and just listen. Thank you for joining us today on the Calvary Church Podcast. We hope you found encouragement and inspiration in today's message. Remember, you are not alone on your faith journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. For more information about our church, upcoming events, and ways to get involved, visit our website at calvaryirwin.com or follow us on social media at Calvary Irwin. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful week.